Touch and Seal Spray Polyurethane Foam Systems deliver a complete, self-contained, and disposable spray foam solution for professional contractors and remodelers. Our spray foam kits are ideal for air sealing, insulating, patching, and filling voids in residential and commercial properties. Because our foam kits have many uses, we have chemical formulations and kit sizes that meet the needs of a variety of applications. Clearly displayed on the front of the package is the approximate board foot yield, indicated by the large numbers, the formula designation, product item number, and the spray foam density declaration. It is important to familiarize yourself with the instructions on the back panel of the package prior to starting your project. Additional illustrated instructions are located on the top panel of the carton. If you should have additional questions at any time about operating your foam kit, or if this is your first time using a foam kit, refer to our detailed frequently asked questions at touchandseal.com. When dispensing touch and seal spray foam, be sure to cover all exposed skin, wear chemical resistant gloves and safety glasses. For additional protection, you may want to consider wearing a one-piece coverall, such as a Tyvek suit to protect your clothes from overspray, and wear a NIOSH-approved respirator to avoid inhaling fumes. Each kit comes complete with everything needed to apply spray foam, two chemical cylinders, an A and a B component, one spray foam applicator, hoses, extra nozzles, chemical-resistant gloves, O-ring lubricant, assembly wrench, instructions, a safety guide, and an SDS. Remove the applicator and hoses, the accessory bag, and operating instructions from the package. Check the pre-attached hose connections and snug tight if necessary with the wrench provided, being careful not to over-tighten. Lay the chemical hoses in the carton notches as shown and close the carton. Next, tear off the rip-and-go panel to access the handle. You can now carry the unit to the job site with the Comfort Grip Carry Handle. With the spray foam applicator trigger lock engaged, slowly open the cylinder valves counterclockwise for three full turns. Chemical will begin flowing into the hoses. Be sure to always dispense foam kits in the upright position. The spray foam applicator meters chemical flow, providing greater control and minimizing waste when used properly. The following instructions ensure maximum efficiency and performance of the product. Aim the spray applicator without an attached mixing nozzle into an appropriate waste container and purge the chemical hoses by depressing the applicator trigger until two roughly equal streams of liquid exit the applicator barrel. Engage the safety lock on the applicator and if necessary, clean excess chemical from the barrel with a rag. Apply the provided lubricant to the O-ring and attach the nozzle onto the barrel of the spray applicator. Twist clockwise until the nozzle is secure. Release the applicator safety and depress the trigger a third to a half of the way to meter the spray. Before beginning foam application, test spray onto scrap material first to ensure even distribution of chemicals. Foam should expand, be off-white in color, and begin to cure in 45 to 60 seconds. Keep in mind that higher temperatures will speed curing and lower temperatures will slow the curing process. Proper operating temperature is critical to product performance. Be sure to check three temperatures chemicals, surface to be foamed, and air temperature. Chemicals should be between 70 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Surfaces and ambient air temperature should be between 60 and 90 degrees. Chemical cylinders that have been stored in temperatures lower than 70 degrees may take as long as 48 hours to reach the proper dispensing temperature. If at any time during dispensing, foam quality is suspect, first replace the used nozzle with a clean, unused nozzle. If nozzle replacement does not solve the problem, refer to the Frequently Asked Questions section at touchandseal.com. Remember, if spray is stopped for more than 30 seconds, foam in the nozzle will begin to cure and disrupt chemical flow, compromising system performance. Replace the used nozzle. To replace a nozzle, engage the safety lock on the applicator, grasp the nozzle, twist counterclockwise, and remove from the barrel. Be sure the barrel is clean and replace with a new nozzle. When insulating, the first step when spraying is to picture frame the cavity. Spray along the perimeter of the area to be foamed. 
Let the foam cure and then fill the cavity to the desired thickness. Be sure to spray in one inch thick layers, allowing the foam to cure before adding a new layer. When air sealing, picture frame the perimeter of the cavity to prevent air leakage. Air sealing is especially useful in rim or band joist areas prior to applying additional spray foam or traditional fiberglass or bat insulation. Remember to seal utility penetrations in the exterior building envelope. When your project is complete, follow these simple instructions to either shut down for future use or prior to disposal. Engage the safety lock on the foam applicator and remove the nozzle. Wipe any foam from the barrel with a clean rag. Close both valves on the cylinders and store in a warm, dry area at temperatures above 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not store at temperatures above 120 degrees Fahrenheit, near steam, open flames, sparks, hot water pipes, chimneys, or heat vents. Operate or purge the system at least once every week by dispensing product until chemicals flow forcefully, usually five or six seconds. This will clear old product from the hoses and prevent chemicals from clogging in the hoses and the applicator. Use all chemicals within 30 days of initial use. Always keep in mind that unopened chemical cylinders have a shelf life of approximately one year, and you can always refer to the Safe Use, Storage, and Handling Guide for more detailed instructions. During the colder months, it is extremely important to remember the temperature sensitivity of two-component foam. Variants outside of the recommended temperature range will drastically affect the performance of your foam kit. Per product instructions, both tank temperatures need to be above 70 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 hours prior to use. We recommend that the cylinders are stored in a heated space. Surface temperature is equally as important. All surfaces should be clean, dry, and above 60 degrees Fahrenheit prior to application. Low surface temperatures will absorb heat from the foam's chemical reaction and can prevent the foam from adhering to the surface, as well as reducing the overall yield of the foam kit. We recommend that the ambient air temperature is above 60 degrees Fahrenheit prior to application. Touch and Seal is not liable for product failure or performance when users fail to follow specific instructions regarding specific temperatures during application. Empty cylinders may contain a small amount of residual chemical and pressure. These cylinders must be relieved of both. In a well-ventilated area, set the cylinder on its side so as to release only the pressure and not any residual chemical. With the cylinder valve facing away from you, slowly open the valve and allow to depressurize for 15 minutes. Where required by law, puncture the pressure relief valve and dispose of chemicals according to instructions in the MSDS. Dispose of empty cylinders according to federal, state, and local regulations. Steel cylinders may be recyclable. Check your local recycling center.